The people of West Papua have been the victims of two conspiracies involving the United States and the United Nations. The first conspiracy took place in 1962, whereby the United States, the United Nations, the Indonesian government, and the Netherlands, that was the former colonial occupier of West Papua, got together and agreed to have West Papua handed over to Indonesia. Keep in mind that there were no West Papuans at this meeting, of course, and that's the nature of conspiracy, because the victims never know uh, when they're about to be victimized. West Papua occupies the Indonesian half of New Guinea, the second largest island in the world after Greenland. It is Indonesia's 26th province. For 20 years I have been exploring this region, trekking through the highlands and learning about a people and land that have grabbed my heart. It is these people and their struggle for survival which I am so passionately focused on. Papua is a Malay word for frizzy-haired people. With a population of 1.9 million spread out over an area the size of California. Some 250 languages are spoken, half of them spoken by fewer than a thousand individuals. Much of West Papua still remains unmapped and as a result untouched tribes hold a part of its mystique. Nestled in a corner of the world some two and a half degrees below the equator. The geography is remarkable. Limitless rainforests, swamps, and cloud-snagged mountains reaching to heights of 16,000 feet, the highest elevation between the Himalayas and the Andes. It receives over 300 inches of rain per year. For 40 years since its incorporation into Indonesia, the people of this region have been waging a struggle for independence from Indonesian rule. Their struggle is also a struggle for survival. 100,000 Papuan lives have been lost during this period. For the Indonesians, it seemed to matter little that the people of West Papua belong to a different culture of the South Seas, that they have animist beliefs and a tradition of headhunting and cannibalism, an economy based on pigs rather than money, and hardly anything in common with the Asian, predominantly Muslim culture that abhors pork.
Indonesia unilaterally annexed the former Dutch colony in 1969 with the United Nations Referendum Act of Free Choice. We hope to raise awareness amongst the American public that they in turn would put pressure on their government to have the United States present a resolution within the United Nations to have a review of the 1969 fraudulent referendum called the Act of Free Choice that the people of West Papua called the Act of No Choice that resulted in the people of West Papua being cheated out of their independence, out of their right to self-determination. What should have been a one-person, one-vote consultation of the Papuans about the future status of their nation became an Indonesian-controlled mockery of the UN policy on decolonization and self-determination. The indigenous people declared their jungle-clad province to be an independent state. <laughs> Armed with arrows and spears, they formed the organization Free Papua. For years, the Free Papua movement has been at battle with the Indonesian military. In 1986, the Indonesian military attacked mountain villages with air and ground forces in an operation skewered meat. Some sources mention the use of napalm, where up to 14,000 natives fled to neighboring Papua New Guinea. Killing is continuing, uh, uh, continuing, and we don't know when that will end. And we need uh, support from world community, particularly Americans. Uh, Why, you may ask, would Indonesia be interested in this area, 3,000 miles east of the capital, Jakarta? Simple, natural resources. Papua is abundant in gold, copper, timber, petroleum, and just about any other minerals imaginable. The Indonesian government has marked off large areas of West Papua for resource development. The French are looking for uranium. Australians are surveying the swamplands for minerals. The Chinese are looking for natural gas, the Japanese for timber, and the British and Americans for oil. However, it is Freeport McMoran that has benefited the most. Freeport has been in Papua since the early 60s. There's an American mining firm, the largest multinational firm operating in West Papua called Freeport McMoran, headquartered in New Orleans, Louisiana. And on the board of Freeport McMoran sat Henry Kissinger at one time. And the role that Henry Kissinger played, and this is going to surprise a lot of people, was to suppress any negative coverage about Free Pep Moran and its involvement in West Papua. Originally copper miners, they recently found gold in their diggings, and theirs is now considered the largest gold mine in the world. An estimated 40 million ounces and counting. The copper deposits some 28 billion pounds. Freeport signed its first Papuan contract, gaining rights to 24,000 acres in 1969. Since then, it has become the biggest foreign taxpayer in Indonesia. A recent contract gives Freeport access to 9 million acres in the Central Range. The mining giant has met fierce opposition from tribal groups who claim tailings have caused environmental disaster. Thousands of villages are being displaced. The mine is on land that belongs to the Mungmi tribe, who have been at war with the mining company since its beginning. As a human rights activist, I can only hope that through awareness, change will occur in Papua. And one day, 
I will return to this remote corner of the world to witness an independent state determining its own future.